Hi, this is Yanis. We're republishing this chapter of The Power of Awareness by Neville. Because as I've delved more into Neville's work, I've come to realise there's something really profound about what he does and what he says and what he has said. And I'm of the view now, opinion, theory, that he is an ascended master, an embodiment of... Well, I got the the channel that it was the disciple Matthew. He just knows too much. So I feel his work is very important and that's why we're republishing this chapter two. More of his readings and his lectures are now going to be found in the other channel, which is I Am Neville. We hope you enjoy them all and get from them as much as we've been getting from them. Thank you for listening. Chapter 2. Consciousness It is only by a change of consciousness, by actually changing your concept of yourself, that you can build more stately mansions. The manifestations of higher and higher concepts, in brackets, by manifesting is meant experiencing the results of these concepts in your world, close brackets. It is of vital importance to understand clearly just what consciousness is. The reason lies in the fact that consciousness is the one and only reality. It is the first and only core substance of the phenomena of life. Nothing has existence for man save through the consciousness he has of it. Therefore, it is to consciousness you must turn, for it is the only foundation on which the phenomena of life can be explained. If we accept the idea of a first cause, it would follow that the evolution of that cause could never result in anything foreign to itself. That is, if the first cause substance is light, all its evolutions, fruits and manifestations would remain light. The first cause substance being consciousness, all its evolutions, fruits and phenomena must remain consciousness. All that could be observed would be a higher or lower form of variation of the same thing. In other words, if your consciousness is the only reality, it must also be the only substance. Consequently, what appears to you as circumstances, conditions, and even material objects are really only the products of your own consciousness. Nature, then, as a thing or a complex of things external to your mind, must be rejected. You and your environment cannot be regarded as existing separately. You and your world are one. Therefore, you must turn from the objective appearance of things to the subjective centre of things, your consciousness. If you truly desire to know the cause of the phenomena of life and how to use this knowledge to realise your fondest dreams, in the midst of the apparent contradictions, antagonisms, and contrasts of your life, there is only one principle at work, only your consciousness operating. Difference does not consist in variety of substance, but in variety of arrangement of the same cause substance, your consciousness. The world moves with motiveless necessity. By this is meant that it has no motive of its own, but is under the necessity of manifesting your concept. The arrangement of your mind and your mind is always arranged in the image of all you believe and consent to as true. The rich man, poor man, beggar man or thief are not different minds, but different arrangements of the same mind. In the same sense that a piece of steel when magnetised differs not in substance from its demagnetised state, but in the arrangement and order of its molecules. A single electron revolving in a specified orbit constitutes the unit of magnetism. When a piece of steel or anything else is demagnetized, the revolving electrons have not stopped. Therefore, the magnetism has not gone out of existence. There is only a rearrangement of the particles so that they produce no outside or perceptible effect. When particles are arranged at random, mixed up in all directions, the substance is said to be demagnetized. But when particles are marshaled in ranks so that a number of them face in one direction, the substance 
is a magnet. Magnetism is not generated, it is displayed. Health, wealth, beauty and genius are not created. They are only manifested by the arrangement of your mind, that is, by your own concept of yourself, in brackets, and your concept of yourself is all that you accept and consent to as true. What you consent to can only be discovered by an uncritical observation of your reactions to life. Your reactions reveal where you live psychologically. Where you live psychologically determines how you live here in the outer visible world. Close brackets. The importance of this in your daily life should be immediately apparent. The basic nature of the primal cause is consciousness. Therefore, the ultimate substance of all things is consciousness.